Hi guys, so in this video I'm going to be talking about my top 10 favourite movies from the 90s that you possibly may not have heard of or maybe not even have seen. Um, so yeah, these are just 10 movies I picked from the decade of the 90s that I think possibly go under the radar quite a lot, a bit under scene. Um, so yeah, um, now if you've seen or heard of any of these 10 movies, that's absolutely great. These are just the movies in my opinion that I think need a bit more sort of coverage as it were and a bit more love. But yeah, more power to you if you've seen or heard of these movies. Maybe you've seen all 10 of them. That's absolutely fantastic. But yeah, in my opinion, I just think some of these need a bit more love. Some of them I think are a bit more well known than others. Um, some of them have sort of gained popularity along the way as it were but yeah some of them i just think never ever really get talked about and some of them have got some fantastic actors in so yeah i'm gonna kick it off with number 10 now and for me that is a little movie called traveler starring mark Wahlberg and bill paxton this movie has a very sort of simple premise but i really really loved it for its cast um like I said, Bill Paxton, Mark Wahlberg. It pretty much follows Bill Paxton, who is sort of part of this sort of like gypsy-esque travellers, conning people, doing sort of like piss poor, really bad jobs, driving around, doing handiwork, but doing really bad work for what they are and just sort of taking the money for them. And Mark Wahlberg sort of sees it and sort of wants to sort of join the group, as it were, and go around conning these people for money and yeah i just thought it was a good little movie really underrated in my opinion but what really drew me to it was its cast um particularly now that bill paxton is no longer with us i think when it passes away it sort of makes their movies and their work a lot more special and i saw this one out gave it a watch and i really really enjoyed it so yeah that's my number 10 pick traveler um so yeah, speaking of Bill Paxton again, at number nine for me um, is probably a little bit more of a popular movie to Traveller, and that is One False Move. Now, I found some of this, the scenes in this movie to be absolutely brutal um, and really uncomfortable at times. It sort of focuses mainly on a group of criminals who words got out that they're sort of they're going to show up at this little town. And the deputy of this little town is absolutely dying for a big, big break and a big bust that he can arrest someone for. And it's all of like the preparation that this guy is going through. And these criminals are just absolutely really bad and really horrific, some of the stuff that they do. And it just made for a little bit of an uncomfortable watch for me. I still really enjoyed the film. You know, um, you got Billy Bob Thornton in there as well, gives a great performance. And yeah, I just thought this movie had, a, again, pretty similar to Traveller. It was the cast that drew me to it, Billy Bob Thornton, Bill Paxton. And I just had a really good time with this movie for what it was. Uncomfortable in places for me, definitely. But I overall thought this was a great little under the radar 90s movie. Um, sort of similar to like Unlawful Entry, those types of movies from the 90s. But yeah, this was a good one that went under the radar in my opinion and i had an absolutely fantastic time with it so yeah that is one false move so coming up at number eight for me is a bit of an early 90s drama for me this one and that is passion fish um starring mary mcdonald um i thought this was a absolutely well acted fantastic drama sort of focusing on mary mcdonald's character who is uh, a soap opera star who pretty much got into a car accident and she's a bit of a very stubborn woman very sort of difficult to get on her side um and you know it's about this relationship that she forms with this carer she has an absolute slew of carers that she goes goes through that just cannot stand to work with her and this new carer that she comes up with, that gets brought in um seems to be her match and they just have to get along even though they just like sort of start off absolutely despising and hating each other and it's sort of about watching that relationship grow and blossom and i thought it was absolutely fantastic just an absolutely fabulous under the radar great drama from the early 90s that i really really enjoyed so yeah 
that is my number eight pick, which is Passion Fish. So coming up at number seven for me is a Steve Buscemi movie that I really quite enjoyed for what it was, and that is In the Soup. Um, yeah, really interesting little movie this about Steve Buscemi plays this character who is pretty much like this sort of director or author who is pretty much down on his luck. And visually in his mind, he creates like the perfect movies in his opinion that he just sort of really, really creative on the mark type of stories and type of visuals. But in reality, the guy hasn't got a penny to his name and just cannot make that transition at all whatsoever. You know, it just really, really had fallen on hard times. But I thought this was a great concept for a movie and just absolutely fantastic. And yeah, I just really enjoyed it. I hadn't seen a movie like it, shot in black and white, which just added to it for me. And yeah, really, really good underrated little drama. A bit like Passion Fish, but more focusing more on the fantasy of film. And yeah, I thought it was really good. So yeah, that is my next pick in the soup. So speaking of Steve Buscemi, Another film coming in at my number six spot. Um, this movie was actually directed by Steve Buscemi as well. And that is Trees Lounge. Um, yeah, another sort of down on his logs type of story about this guy who keeps going to this bar called Trees Lounge. And he just t tries to think, you know, what if I wasn't drinking? What if I wasn't getting drunk all the time? And what could I do in life? And yeah, it was it was a very sort of downbeat type of drama that I enjoyed and had a really good time with it. There isn't really much more to the story than that, but it leads to quite a brutal um, chase and a bit of a beating. I think it's Daniel Baldwin, one of the Baldwin brothers, I think it's Daniel Baldwin in this uh, from Vampires. And it just leads to like this really uncomfortable conflict towards the end with this ice cream truck. That's involved. It's quite humorous, but it's like it's it's got a bit of uh, violent undertone subtext to it. But yeah, I really thought this was quite good um, for what it was, and you know, I didn't realize until recent recently that Steve Buscemi actually directed this movie as well, and it's pretty solid, and it really does hold up. And yeah, it's a great little drama. So yeah, that is Trees Lounge. So coming in at number five for me is. Fatal Love. Now, I'm cheating with this one a little bit because this is actually a TV movie. It didn't really get a theatrical release. But it stars Molly Ringwald. And this was a great early 90s performance from her, I think, um, because I think the sort of the Brat Pack type of actors sort of like disappeared in the 90s, really, and just couldn't really capture that magic from the 80s. But this one touches on a bit more of a darker subject with sort of the AIDS epidemic from the 80s and how Molly Ringwald's character sort of contracted AIDS and became the spokeswoman um, to the school and how she sort of spread the word about AIDS and bringing sort of recognition to the disease. And I thought this was a really good take on it. You know, the movie's not perfect, absolutely not. It's got a bit of hokey acting in here and there, but for what it was, I still really enjoyed it. So, yeah, that's Fatal Love. I think it's a really good movie that's worth checking out. Coming in at number four for me is Red Rock West. Now, I've seen this movie sort of pick up in popularity um, in recent times, and rightly so as well, because I think this is a great little movie. Great Nicolas Cage movie as well. And it sort of is about mistaken identity, shall we say. You know, Nicolas Cage is this drifter who gets mistaken for this hitman and takes the money for this job. And then the real hitman shows up, played by Dennis Hopper, and just complications ensue. And it's just a great, fun movie. You know, I can't really say much more than that. Than that. It's just everything you'd expect it to be with the actors that are in this movie. And I had such a great time with it and just think it's an absolute fantastic, makes for a great rewatch as well. So, yeah, that is my number four pick, Red Rock West. 
So coming in at number three for me is Dogfight, starring Lily Taylor and River Phoenix. Now, this is a this is a great River Phoenix performance, and there's no doubt about that. But the the plot of this movie is a bit mean spirited, in my opinion. It sort of focuses on these these soldiers who have got a bit of downtime from duty. They end up going to this bar. And they play this game together where it's like, who can sort of pull the ugliest woman, shall we say? It's a, it's very sort of mean spirited in that sense. But I still enjoyed this movie for what it was. You know, it's like I said, it's a bit mean spirited, but it's well made. If that makes sense, it's definitely worth checking out. Like I said before about Bill Paxton, when an actor passes away, it sort of makes the work that they've done a bit more precious and dogfights no exception for River Phoenix. You know, this is up there for me with like sneakers and running on empty, a great performance by him as well. And there's this great little film that went under the radar. So yeah, that is dogfight. Coming in at number two for me is a foreign film. I think this is Spanish and French, um, particularly, you know, uh, with its sort of director and producers. I think it was produced by Pedro Alandor as well, who's a fantastic director. And this is, I think this is called Action Mutant, or Mutant Action in English. Um, and this was just one of the most bizarre, batshit, crazy movies I have ever seen. Um, the premise of this movie is pretty much, it's a dystopian future where beautiful people have sort of taken over and are like, primarily of, of running the show pretty much as it were in this in this dystopian world and ugly people or the mutants have sort of become underground and basically what happens is this gang of mutants who all have absolutely fantastic designs by the way sort of kidnap the mayor's daughter and pretty much hold her for ransom and end up being sort of chased by the police at the time and end up sort of crashing on this different planet and on this planet, no woman seems to exist, and everyone seems to be after this this mayor's daughter. It's absolutely batshit insane, and it's super violent and super nasty. Uh, but it's just really, really on the scene, and it is just it's so much fun for what it is. I highly recommend checking this movie out purely for the visuals alone. There's this really gross scene in it as well, where someone's being cut open with a razor blade. And as they're cutting them open, the guy's like pouring salt and vinegar over the wounds. It's just, oh, it's so nasty. And it's like, you really feel the pain. But the designs really, really make up for this movie. And it is super, super gory and a lot of fun. Um, so, yeah, that is mutant action. I really enjoyed it for what it was. Just really delivered on the visuals. So that leads me to my number one pick. Now, I don't think this... This movie is a little bit on the scene for what it is, but it's got a great cast to it. Uh, with Kiefer Sutherland and Reese Witherspoon. And that is Freeway. Um, yeah, this is just a really, really cool movie, shall I say, that I just really, really enjoyed. Reese Witherspoon pretty much plays this, this drifter who is hitches a ride with Kiefer Sutherland's character. And Kiefer Sutherland in this movie is a complete psycho. I believe this is a sort of like modern retelling of the um, Little Red Riding Hood story. And pretty much he's an absolute psycho and sort of wants to kill Reese Witherspoon. And Reese Witherspoon is like really, really good at defending herself. She absolutely batters him when he, he goes to those places. And what happens is, is it ends up going to court and Kiefer Sutherland plays the victim. He is like, oh, this woman attacked me. She absolutely battered me. And Reese Witherspoon ends up going to prison um, instead of for losing, you know, playing the, the self-defense ticket. So he pretty much sort of manipulates the story and she ends up getting punished for it. I won't say much more than that, but it is... A really really good movie that I really really enjoyed and you just wanted to see this, this horrible nasty piece of shit get his comeuppance um, 
And yeah, I don't really want to say much more than that. It just had an absolutely fantastic cast, which told me, you know, I absolutely love Kiefer Sutherland with his work from, you know, The Lost Boys and Stand By Me and The Three Musketeers. Yeah, and the underrated Dark City as well. But this was a really, really good one. And, you know, Reese Witherspoon and Kiefer Sutherland, I just think they made for a, a great pair in this movie, uh, acting off each other. And I really had a good time with it. So... Yeah, absolutely fantastic underseen movie in my opinion so yeah that is my number one pick which is freeway so yeah those are my top 10 underseen movies from the 90s you know as i said let me know if you've seen any of these movies down below what you think of them are they underseen in your opinion do they need more love i certainly think so that's why i've picked all 10 of these movies so yeah i'll leave the video there and say thanks very much for watching stay safe and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.